come in. You're now rocking with the greatest. Reacting to the old and reacting to the latest. Every single genre that's Birdman's taste. Everybody's welcome here in Birdman's place. Who was shaking, Bacon? Birdman here. Welcome to my place. As always, thank you for stopping on in. Ladies and gentlemen, you have tuned in to yet another reaction slash review video. And we're going to dig right in. But first things first, I'm going to need you to do something for me. Follow me on twitch.com slash birdman's place for all of my live streams. They're the lifeblood of this channel. They're a marathon and we have a blast. Secondly, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to need you to go ahead and relax. Take your shoes off. Kick your feet up and enjoy because we going to have some fun today. <clears throat> you have to bear with me. I've got some allergies messing up my voice. Um, today I'm going to be reacting to something very unique, a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I'm very excited about it. Um, this is how Torah scrolls are made. So this was requested and, uh, I I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. You know, I personally, I'm a Christian. Um, I do find Torah scrolls unique and, and very interesting. So I'm, I'm really, um, I'm intrigued to see what exactly happens here. So, uh, at this point, ladies and gentlemen, there's really only one thing left to do. Let's get it. Sofer is someone generally who writes Torah scrolls, mezuzah scrolls, tefillin scrolls, and Megillah scrolls. So they write them, but I, I joke around that I'm, a so, I'm the Sofer that doesn't write. Oh, wow. I love being a... See, if they're doing that, like with a brush or something, I could never gym do coach. that. And I wanted, I started a teaching, which I really wanted to do, truthfully. So I was teaching and I realized I wasn't really... I was better at uh, being better being a gym teacher than a Jewish studies teacher, and I was not really like uh, I wanted to be their friend and buddy and like play sports with them rather with than the actually quill. teach wow. the Torah. But as a full time teacher, <clears throat> I didn't think I was qualified or or had the right discipline to be a teacher full time. I wanted to still do something Jewish <clears throat> or get a job. So a friend of mine was a scribe, and I started working for him. And I started realizing I like doing this. It's something that I have the discipline. I can. Um, and in the Yiddish, we call it zitzfleisch, where you can you can sit properly and not run, you know, be too nervous. I had a very steady hand, generally, and I still do, fortunately, in my right side, especially because I'm right. -handed. My handwriting is horrible, absolutely horrible. I could not do this. Like, I, I can't even imagine. And, um, and uh, I it kind of fit me wow. pretty well. Wow. Yeah. No, I couldn't do that. Couldn't even begin to dream of doing that. Now with God, all things are possible, but... To become a scribe, um, no one was properly, um, can properly train me to be a scribe in Los Angeles. So my, my uh, friend who I was working for said, you need to go to Israel probably to be trained properly. So I went to this place called the Vod Mishmerit Stam. It's an organization to make sure that people are having kosher tefillin and make sure all their parchments are written properly. So I went to them wow. and they said, I said, what should I do to get certified? Because I already learned the laws. So they said, go to this person who lives in the community of Beit El. And that's funny. I never knew that coat. That's what kosher meant was fit. I never knew that in, in Israel Interesting. and he can teach you and he knows all the laws. So this person was certified by a very important rabbi called Rabbi Wozner in Jerusalem. So he, he taught me separately and he certified me himself and, and he, he tested me and then he certified me to become a sofa. And the truth is I'm to, not once has someone said, I need to see your certification. I have it. I have it in a folder, but, uh, it's, um, people at some point, they uh, they found out they they know who I am and they said yeah I trust him so it's cool to get that stamp of authority stamp so of there approval. are certain laws that a sofer has to learn and has to know so a very good example of that you can't erase God's name so for example we had a Torah that a sofer a scribe wrote for me a sofer wrote for me and uh, it had the computer check done so the computer check checked everything as well. And on it, the, the computer caught that it was supposed to say the word Yihia, yud hey yud hey and then it said that the God's name, yud hey and then vav hey So that you couldn't erase. And for some reason, they found the computer found the problem, but no one fixed it. They probably were afraid to fix it because you know how to erase God's name. So 
What, I, what we had to do is we take the whole section. There were three columns. It's probably probably three thousand letters were written on that, and that we had he had to write that whole section over again. Oh and wow! Then we sewed that back into the Torah. Not only are you oh. paying the person to write hand handwrite. I can't even imagine all the work that goes into stuff like that because especially with all the rules. Something which is very difficult to do, but you're also paying them to, to make sure, like if he makes a mistake, that's on him and he has to deal with that. Yeah. I'd be terrified. If you had to roll out a whole scroll of a Torah, it would go almost the size of a football field. They take pieces of animal skin and stretch it and make it as, as good as possible, nice as possible so that you can write nicely on it. It's always nice wow. if the parchment is white as possible so that the writing is clear and the, and the ink is dark as possible. So when we use the animal skin, that's what we use for all of these items. Every kind of parchment we use that we write on is made out of animal skin, not out of paper. So you have to take 60 pieces of parchment and the scribe writes on each one of them. And wow. then afterwards you sew it together and there's these little pieces of parchment that you tape to the top and the bottom to secure the sewing. The Torah scroll actually consists of 304,805 letters. And when you think about how long it takes, because you have to write it with a quill, so you, t you dip the quill in ink and you write a letter or two, you dip the quill in ink and write a letter or two. So a Torah scroll Jeez. usually takes people, uh, if someone says, I want to write, uh, I want you to write a Torah scroll, it's like, okay, give me eight to 10 months or maybe longer. I personally, oh, if I had wow. to write a Torah scroll, since I'm out of practice, it would t take me probably a few years because I write slowly and I write very carefully. See, that's, I could never do that, ever. A Megillah scroll is a lot less. Um, it's usually not written as tall as a big piece of parchment, it's a smaller piece of parchment. And it is made of several pieces. It's long enough where you can't write on one whole piece. So it's also pieces that are sewn together. It's usually about eight pieces. Sometimes they write it on, they write it on bigger parchment and it's only two larger pieces, but it's usually... A I'm guessing that's a scroll back behind him right there. And that looks like it's rolled up a lot. Like, oh, and that's all animal skin. About eight that's pieces wild. that are sewn together. So the truth is there are more than, we, we talk about a Megillah scroll, we traditionally are talking about a Megillah Esther, the scroll of Esther, the story of Esther, the Purim story. That's traditionally read on, piece, on parchment during the holiday of Purim. So that usually is ar around, like I said, about eight pieces sewn together. Um, the, there are other scrolls Gotta also, there, there are actually five Megillah that we read during the Jewish calendar. But the main requirement is the one the Megillah Esther to read on Purim is on that scroll. <clears throat> Some people use scrolls for the other holidays, but most people just read out of a, out of a um, Tanakh, out of a, um, a, a Hebrew Bible, a Jewish Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. The mezuzah scroll is much smaller. There's two paragraphs in the Torah of the Bible that talk about writing a mezuzah. It actually says, Uchtav tam al You should write them on your doorposts in your in your um, courtyards. So those two paragraphs, um, they're really the Shema. There, there's three paragraphs in the Shema, but only two of the Shema paragraphs talk about mezuzah. So those two scrolls are written, uh, those two paragraphs are written on every mezuzah scroll. And when you roll it up, there's actually two words on the front, Shin Dalad Yud, which is one of God's names. And it also stands for Shomer Latot Yisrael, the Shin, the Dalet, and the Yud, which means God watches over the doors of Israel. Hmm. Very cool. There's four places in the Torah that talk about tefillin. So when you for so those four par, uh, paragraphs are written on parchment and put inside the tefillin. There's, you wear the tefillin on the arm and you, till, you wear something on the head. There's a box that goes in the arm and it straps around your arm and then there's straps that tie to your head that you wear on the, for the tefillin for the, we call the shell roche for the head. So for the Jewish community, people are always bringing me their things to make, examine. So they're bringing me their mezuzah scrolls to check. So I check them, so I'll put the Torah aside and do those, those projects. I put together a pair of tefillin for someone and I'll do, that's kind of like uh, something I'll always do to move the Torah project aside. And then some days I'll have people coming in, they want me to check their tefillin. It's like a tefillin day. I'm always just checking tefillin that day. And some days it's a mezuzah day. But on the most, uh, almost every single day, I'm working on a Torah and doing something else. Mm -hmm. 
either a synagogue will give me tour to, to repair to make sure all the letters are properly and all the sewing is nice and make sure everything's connected. Um, so I usually have one of those on the table or I have a tour that I'm restoring myself. I usually as a project, I'll buy an old Torah and restore it. And Restoring stuff like that's got to be so painstaking because you, you got to make sure everything's perfect. You got to, you can't make one mistake. And if there's mistakes made, like he said earlier, you got to take whole sections out. That's wow. And then sell it to someone who wants to buy a used Torah. So if someone wants to buy a Torah scroll, um, someone has a, a scribe or so far, write them. So what I do is since I don't write them, I arrange and make sure everything's done properly. Particularly my role is to make sure that the Jewish community has all these items and that they're in kosher condition. Everyone's commanded to write their own Torah. So how do you do that? Ideally, the best way to do it is actually write a whole Torah yourself, which basically most people cannot do. And I am as a scribe, and I haven't done it myself either. So people fulfill the mitzvah either by hiring someone to write a whole Torah scroll for themselves, or if you even just write one letter or hire someone to write one letter, we consider that as if you wrote a whole Torah scroll. So how do we do the final ceremony is um, with the Torah scribe writes all the letters, and the last few letters of the Torah we leave, well, they're supposed to be left blank, but what we do now is we outline the last letters. So all you have to do is like touch up the letters and fill them in properly. So I'm like, careful, I get really nervous. Um, but usually at the you don't want them to mess it up. I prefer to do it, and mostly <clears throat> I do it as where I'm there holding my arm while they do it together with me to finish the Torah. But that's their way that they're contributing to writing a Sefer Torah. So that's part of the ceremony. It's very exciting when people get together and we actually complete a Torah scroll. When I'm writing a Torah scroll, in Hebrew, I say the words, the shame could do shot, safer Torah. I'm writing for this for the sake of the holiness of the Torah. I'm not just writing a, a, just a paragraph of, of some, some kind of secular writing. I'm writing a holy writing. So you always have to be conscious that you're doing something for that sake. I'm also, I, this is my profession, so I shouldn't be thinking I'm doing this for the sake of making money. Um, you know, it's, I'm producing something that I'm making money off of, but it's something that you have to always remember while you're doing it, that you're writing it for the sake of the holy thing yeah, that you're doing. You have to know what you're writing and be conscious of what more you're doing and the money. holiness of what you're doing. The meaning is a lot more important than money. Usually you're exposed to a Torah scroll only when you actually go up to the Torah and look at it and it's something, wow, it's a Torah scroll, don't touch the parchment, it's like very holy. So it took me a while to get, not that I'm jaded anymore, but um, when I look at a Torah scroll, from when I first did the actual first correction of a letter, it was very intimidating, very scary for me because I'm working on a Torah scroll. It got yeah. easier, but at the same time, it's where you have the most reverence as they're working on a Torah scroll. And so this is you're exposed to every day, not the actual parchment, but you think about them and see them every day. Um, not the insides, people don't see the insides every day, but a Torah scroll is one of those things when you're in synagogue and you see the Torah scroll, they pick it up. And you, when you have that special time where you get your Aliyah when you give to the Torah, it's a very special feeling. And seeing that Torah scroll is a very meaningful thing. So that's kind of where the holiest part of what I do, it means a lot to me to that I'm working on the Torah scrolls. Um, I kind of feel a responsibility to um, to help people along their spiritual journey and make sure they mm. they feel their lives are properly run the way that's supposed to be done. It's nice to know that uh, that I'm there. I'm there for people that need this, this kind of thing in their life to make sure their, their religious things are done properly. But that's where it led me to becoming a sofer was that uh, I was inspired to do that, and I wanted to do something in the Jewish community, and that worked out well for me as, um, as far as my career. Very cool. was very very cool um it gave me a um a mindset on how much goes into that because yeah i get it they are like scribing god's word so i mean you you it's got to be perfect and you're doing it letter by letter by letter yeah it's a true calling for god and his word absolutely um, letter by letter by letter by letter, and it's done with a quill, and you got to do it perfect, and you're doing it on animal skin. I mean, it's it's a kosher animal skin. It's just there's so much to it. I can't even 
Oh, I can't even imagine doing that. I could never do that. That's beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Follow me on social media. My links are right down here. If you'd like to be a member of the flock on Patreon, get some exclusive content. Videos you won't see on the channel. Videos YouTube doesn't want you to see that they've blocked. Those are on there. You can get early access to my videos. You can get your request shot at the list faster. You can get 10% off of merchandise. And y'all, we're a family. We really, really are. Also, come check out my second channel called He Is I Am. If you're a Christian, if you're curious, if you have questions, there's answers to be had. We have videos about God, videos about different parts of the Bible, and uh, videos about our walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So come check that out as well. Link also in the description below. Like, share, subscribe, pass me around. Let's grow the Birdman fam. Birdman fam flock, I love you guys. I mean it. See you next time. Much love. Peace. Oh, I shake it, baby. Birdman here. If you like this video, go ahead and become a member of the Birdman fam by hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell. Also, make sure to watch the videos on this screen as well as the playlist I've put together. You can also become a member of the flock, get some behind the scenes fun, early access, and your request shot up the list faster. Check that out as well. Birdman fam, flock, I love you guys. I'm going to see you all in the next one. Much love. Peace.